Hey there, this is Bill, and you are watching FFR episode 1.8. Uh, on today's episode, we're gonna skip ahead to Lenser Heidel. The one thing I will say on Andorra, uh, just with Matthew Vanderpool, seems like maybe altitude was the problem. That's the, you know, we talked about in the last show, and it sort of seemed to come to fruition with his performance, but he is back. Uh, to try it again, he's in Lenzerheide, ready to go. Had a, actually a little funny um, interaction with him today. He was not wearing his team kit, just wearing a black kit. Still had the um, the purple, red, and white helmet on, but I, I didn't see him. Didn't see him coming around because he wasn't in kit, and uh, he sort of rolls up on me, just like, hey, how's it going? And I was like, oh, hey, what's up? And then quickly started filming, so... Um, Thank you, thank you for the heads up that you were around, Matthew. Uh, as far as Lenzer Haida goes, it was good to get out onto the course, good to check out all the new sections that they put on. From last year to this year, I got a little better understanding of how I want to cover this race. It was a little difficult just with the crowds and how how wide the course is, you know, from end to end. We talked a little bit in, in Andorra about how easy it was to get around. Exact opposite situation in Lenzer Haida from end to end. I don't I don't think you can do that covering one race. I don't think you have enough time and you're not able to fight the crowds. They don't have those really nice cut throughs that I was able to use in uh, Val Nord, Andorra to, to really um, cover many, many uh, places on a course in a single lap. Uh, that being said, a couple new features out there that we're going to take a look at, a couple of cool things, and a lot of decision making, which I really like. A lot of different lines, even separate A and B lines, and a lot of teams and riders taking their time, making sure that they got everything dialed in today. A lot of sessioning out there, just doing segments over and over and over again, and that's, that's the part that I love. That's the part that I love to see, and that's what we're going to see in these highlights right now. Almost as spot on as finding a Swiss army knife in the woods in Lenzerheide is them playing Final Countdown at a race. Anyway, this uh, section right here, this is that new little feature all the way down there, which uh, I'll get a closer look for you all in a second. Uh, that it's another place that a lot of these teams have just stopped and really taken a couple extra looks at it to make sure that they got that dialed in especially since it's new and then after that they come up this uh, cool ramp that's now a little more complete than when we saw it yesterday but this new section there is an a and a b line and to be perfectly honest, after riders have gone over the A-line a couple times, I don't think anybody really had an issue with it. I didn't see anybody take this B-line. I don't think it's faster, and I, honestly, I don't think it's much easier. This is the B-Line, again, I haven't seen anybody ride it. Everybody's concentrating on the A-Line. All right, behind me is this uh, jump area, and then it goes right into this double slalom section. The jump's cool, it's not really that exciting. The double slalom, that's super exciting. That's a fun little section. Two lines in there, if you're coming in there at the same time, it's really a little race to the bottom to get to that uh, rocky section right after it. Just from listening to some of the team's talk, you wanna be on what would be here, the right side, the rider's left side. That seems to be the better lane for when you come into the area here. So as you can see from him, he took he took that that outside line, which just sort of sets up for that next section, which we're going to talk about here right now. So I spent a lot of time looking at this one feature here. It's uh, probably about three quarters of the way through the lap, and it's one that teams are spending a lot of time trying to figure out which line to go. It comes right after the double slalom section, so you're coming in this fast, but then it's right into this rocky section. There's a high line, and there's a low line. And it's really this entrance. 
and that rock right down there. And if you're going to ride up on our left on that rock, or you're going to go on the right and get a better line towards that route right after it. And then you can see there, that's the second decision, going either low or high up on this line. And honestly, every team's come through here, every rider's come through here, they've stopped, they've checked out this section specifically. So it should be one that would be interesting to watch some race day. Try this on your side. Hey, it's it's the next day and it's just back here at the same spot and I can tell you just uh, from watching more practice Nino he took the high line this is the Lenzer Hyde cliff behind me one of the premier features on this course something I mean you're gonna see Nino getting huge air on this one just like we've seen with other features on the course, an A and a B line, haven't seen anybody take this B line. It's a pretty easy straight shot over the top of this, and uh, yeah, it's much quicker, and everybody will be going straight over the Glenzer Hyde Cliff. This is a really fun area right after the Lenzer Hyde Cliff that has a, a, a couple of these twists and turns in here. This hill that we're seeing right in front of you is one that I think can be used to attack because people are coming in here with a lot of speed around that berm and coming up there. I've seen some moves already just in practice of people making the pass. So it's one to look out for during race time. Little known fact about the Swiss. They love four non blondes. <laughs> Nothing real special there. Whoa, hang on. Go now. Um, I just like that view. It's amazing. God, I say that a lot. Particular. It's cool. So yesterday they had this set up a little differently, the A and the B line, really the new A line here was not an advantage at all. It was a really weird angle, it looks like they retaped a little bit, made it a little, a little easier, a little more enticing for uh, guys to go down. There's definitely more people trying it out this today than there were yesterday. This B line over here, now the B line, that was, for last year that was the A line, so little changes on the course in this section. Look at that sweet TV stand. I'm definitely going up there now before Red Bull takes it over. I always try to jump onto the Red Bull platforms before race day. Just because I'm so jealous during race day, because they're obviously the best views in the house. Just get so much coverage up here. More A and B lines here. These are all over the place. It really looks like that left line's faster. 
When's the hide The race of A and B lines. All right, that's about it. Thanks for tuning in to FFR. Uh, for all the Andorra talk and Lenzer hide and everything else uh, cross country mountain bike related, tune in to Crosshairs Radio. We're going to be doing another Crosshairs Radio episode as soon as I get back into the States. So uh, we'll be talking about these races much more in depth on that. So Crosshairs Radio, go subscribe. Uh, go to Wide Angle Podium Podcast Network and become a member there. Then you can uh, follow Crosshairs Radio and all of the other awesome shows that we have available for you to watch. Also, go follow Trek Factory Racing XC on Instagram, on Twitter, and also on Facebook. Uh, they, they are the reason that I'm able to bring you all of these vlogs without their help getting me over here and uh, working for them. I won't be able to do any of this stuff for you all. Hope this uh, has been helpful. Hope you watch the races. Let me know what you think. Feedback at cxairs.com, and we will talk to you soon. Skinner. Turn it up. <laughs>